Hi, this is Erica, a.k.a. The Cosmic Mama, and welcome to Women of the Stars. Today, we're going to explore the resource skill of self-resourcing. I just want to help you to show up for yourselves. Some among us are feeling really drained and need to be renewed. And this was something I wanted to talk about last week, but I'm getting around to it now. But this idea of being renewed, because I was just thinking about how much it really sucks sometimes to be in certain conversations with certain people. It's like a spiritual dead zone, right? And you're, you just feel people, they're oblivious at how much they suck the energy out around you. Or maybe they're not, because some of this is really tricky. Some of these are some really lame games that are being played. And understanding this maybe on a spiritual level, that people don't know these little forces that kind of hijack them. And it's hard to describe because people will honestly get you into a thumb wrestling match in some of these conversations. And in that case, it's hard to talk without feeling like you're constantly being attacked. Like people are just talking to you like they're just willfully ignorant and they go out of their way to misunderstand you. And I've I've even seen this in my live chat where people can just go through the trouble of the, it's like, you know what it is? That spirit wants to fight. It's like a negative energy that wants to fight as if they don't understand the human condition at all. And it's really annoying. There's several places where communication failures, miscommunication and misunderstandings can occur. And I'm going to list some of them and define them. Like one is an echo chamber. And I, I would describe it sometimes as swimming in private pools. And so you go to certain telegram groups or functions or meetings or whatever, and it's really just an echo chamber. It's an environment where individuals go because they only want to hear what they already believe. And they interact with like-minded people, reinforcing the same existing beliefs, but preventing exposure to diverse ideas. So they don't want to hear anything new. We just want to say so-and-so is the greatest and so-and-so is the best. And I read all those books and I, I listen to all those channels and I, and they only want to come around to just really just absorb and reabsorb what they've already absorbed. And so it really leads into like group think, right? And then people become extremely attached to those ideas. So there's nothing you can do or say outside of what's already believed. It can be actually dangerous, you know, to be in an environment like that and open up a, a new can of worms, maybe, or just try to express a new idea because that, that's not where you go for that. And I was even saying before, that's like swimming in a private pool <laughs> and you need to be out in the ocean. If you're a flexible person, open to different books and ideas and things like that, and you do lots of research, you got to be in a ocean. You got to be beachfront. You know what I mean? You can't go swimming in private pools. Then there's people that are willfully ignorant. There's some differently abled people around us. And sometimes I think we can go, I think they all get customer service jobs too. <laughs> it's, it's like really freaky. These people that you talk to on the phone and they're like, that's our policy. You know, like, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute that, you know, <laughs> you can talk to some people and you're like, I know this person did not just say that. And then it's like, you could literally ask them, did you just hear what you just said? Because it sounds so freaking ridiculous, right? So it's people that they deliberately refuse to accept or seek out information that challenges their beliefs or preconceptions. But it's like they're reading from a script and it has to be what's on there or that's that it's willfully ignorance now then there's cognitive dissonance and that's a psychological discomfort experience when holding conflicting ideas leading to a mental stress and difficulty accepting new ideas knowing that i mean you could use the bible for this 
or Christianity for this, um, you could you could say, you know, because you could think of many ways where people read the Bible and they hear parts of it that say, above all things, to love one another, right? Or or they can just, you know, but then there is no love in their behavior. Let's just say that one. There's no love in their behavior. Their behavior is judgmental and all the scriptures about love and patience and the fruit of the spirit, you skip all that. And then it goes to doing something completely contrary to what the Bible says. And it's these certain traditions or whatever that have been built up among people that they can completely ignore what the Bible says, even though they're reading it. It's, it's amazing. That's all I can say. It's amazing. Um, But this, you'll notice, when it comes to cognitive dissonance, that will create a hysterical state, a violent state, um, very objectionable, very attached to this idea. And if you produce evidence outside of that, because they can't process it, they will actually lash out at you. So this is why it's like dissonance and they have difficulty accepting it in the conflicting idea that it, it it's almost as if the brain, the muscle, like imagine your brain was like a muscle, like your arm and you were trying to straighten out your arm. You're trying to straighten this muscle out in the person's brain and it won't snap back. It won't Wham! If you stretch it out, it'll just snap back and they will lash out. That's the only thing I can say about that. Then there's confirmation bias. So that's a tendency to seek out information that confirms what you already believe. It's very much like um, an echo chamber. But, you know, if you go out and you believe that Honda sucks and then you go look it up on the Internet, type it up, Honda sucks then you're like, yeah, you can find articles about how Honda suck. If you say um, Honda is the best car ever and you go look it up because you believe that, boom, you can always find and stack the evidence. It's it's like the person will deliberately never challenge that because I, I feel like this. If, when ideas come across the screen or I get information, even videos like, oh, is this video true or not? Do you test the truth to see if it's really firm or do you just accept it blindly? You just take it. And that's where I would say is a confirmation bias because a lot of times you might want to believe something, but you still should challenge it. You should challenge the integrity of the information just to make sure, you know, then there's gaslighting, and that's when people are just like, they want to act completely oblivious to what you're saying and make you feel like you're crazy. It's a manipulative tactic used to make someone doubt their own perceptions, memories, or sanity. And I would say people make backhanded comments. Well, it's not like you ever remember anyway. Well, you're always doing this. And you never do that. And every time I see you, you know, they'll make these strong statements. It's very subtle, but the statements are actually very strong and they can tear at you and your confidence. And so if I can deteriorate your confidence, then I can win any argument with you or convince you, you don't need to trust yourself. You don't need to think for yourself. Girl, you know you're not a good thinker. You know you're not good at math. You know you're not the most scientific person. Whatever it is, it's like these little, they're backhanded statements and they kind of rip you apart. Now, this one was new to me, but I like it. It's called the straw man argument. So imagine that. This is like the three little pigs. The one house is made out of straw, one house made out of stick, one house made out of stone, right? So the straw was the easiest one to blow away. 
So people will come at you and misrepresent, you know, their position or their argument to make it easier to attack with misleading, misunderstanding and misinterpretations. So people, they want to use a partial information. I have a good one too, because I saw someone do a case study over CV pandemic type information. And it was um, (laughs) about this person whose lungs was worse than a smoker because they had CV. Which that could happen. It could. But in this situation, the smoker's lung and the other person's lung, there was not any other supporting information. I said, for all I know, the person who has CV may have worked in a fiberglass plant. You know what I mean? What if they work with carcinogens of some sort? Where, you know, what if they work with chemicals or, I mean, even a hairdresser or someone like that who works with toxic chemicals and stuff like that. But the it was like, you're going to bring a small amount of general information and use that to try to confirm everything that you're saying. We saw this in 2020, so many, so many, you know, just partial claims, you know, this leads to this and that leads to that with no evidence. And then we talked about that group think phenomenon because that's a part of that echo chamber activity right there where you got flawed decision making, but I guess in group think they say the phenomenon is more that you prioritize harmony with the group because that's your friend. Now, this is really dangerous in the fact that you can be my friend, but if you're wrong, you're just wrong. I'm not going to follow you just because you're my friend or follow you up or encourage you into some BS just because you're my friend. That's not how it works for me. But a lot of groups, you know, if you get in a friend group that's three or more, boom, you're in trouble, right? Because (laughs) the other two can gang up on you. And they're like, well, you know, I'm with you because I'm with Bill all the time because Bill Bill's my friend. But now look at Katie. She doesn't agree. So we're going to kick her out of the friend group. And that's how that works, you know. But people who really want true friendships, they want to know. They want to know if they're on the right track. They want to know if they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Or do they? You tell me. Now, oh, this is so annoying. I know people like this, right? (laughs) There can be things that are good and there can be things that are bad. But then there's exceptions to the rule. And people, when you're in the middle of explaining something, because you're on one track trying to explain this, they want to do what's called information overload, which is overwhelm or cause excessive amount with, with excessive amount of information, making it challenging to discern the truth from falsehood and leading to confusion and misinterpretation. That might be on another level. So they want to basically stack the deck. Sometimes you're just trying to finish a statement and then someone can throw maybe a gender bender in there or, well, not all people do that or not everyone. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm just, I'm not, you know, you just say you're in the course of a conversation, you're just trying to explain a concept, but they want to dump and confuse and cut you off and, and it, well, you can't, you can't really say that because 90% of the time we don't know blah, 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 blah. Like sometimes it could be providing good information, but sometimes you're just trying to get through a topic and just express a concern, you know? I think you guys can get that. So these terms, they have various contexts and including spiritual, psychological, or political discussions where communications break down and there's a misalignment. And what you really need for yourself is to pull back sometimes out of these conversations and find some safe space. It's the exact opposite of being in a dead zone because you want to be in a safe space 
where you're not going to be misinterpreted, where you could actually be able to express yourself. And sometimes it takes space. It's just you alone. But you know how some people say, that's my person, because the, it's a person maybe you can talk to. But um, safe space. Think about that. Where you can be vulnerable. I mean, some people do take advantage of safe space. They take advantage and they can hijack the space. But see, those are manipulative people, right? So we're talking about, you know, like we said with the Pokemon conversation, we're talking about being in a space where people are able to mutually respect you. And they're not going to try to hijack every conversation and take it over, but instead make space for you to be you, for me to be me. I take time to listen. And some of us were super chatty. Like I talk a lot, but I I have to like back up. And when I'm having conversations with my friends, not act like I got a microphone, you know, and I have to ask them about themselves and their kids and, you know, how is their day and, you know, allow people space. But safe space is supportive. It's non-judgmental. It's inclusive. Where individuals feel comfortable expressing themselves and sharing their thoughts and feelings. And they can actually open into open dialogue without the fear of criticism or harm. Safe space can be a physical location, you know, we can go to to do that or a virtual space or a forum. But I'm really just thinking safe space, you know the people and you know the energy. You're not working around a bunch of people with entity attachments and things going on and and you know people who are flexible and open. And then sometimes you can create that safe space just for yourself because sometimes you can talk to yourself or, you know, sometimes you can talk to source or just speaking out loud to your guides or whatever, where, you know, there might not be an auditory feedback, but you can, you can express yourself. A lot of times we feel like we have to call someone to express ourselves. It's a, it's a habit, picking up the phone. Wearing people out, (laughs) taking up other people's energy. Sometimes we do need, you know, the feedback, the energy, you know, but sometimes it's okay to actually just be with yourself. So what I want to encourage you to do is take some time to be there for yourself. Show up for yourself. Be loyal to yourself and just take some time to relax. And I'm going to repeat this uh, mantra, affirmation, however you want to call it. And let's just do this for yourself and take a moment. And so maybe if you want to pause and gather yourself, maybe you want to lay down, maybe you want to light a candle. Maybe you want to light an incense or create some special, you know, smell good for yourself. Just remember, like, using some light, beautiful fragrance like some jasmine or, you know, some floral fragrance or something. One of your favorites, just name it. Put that under your nose or put that in your space. The olfactory nerve. If you get calming herbs, or calming oil fragrances, and you take a deep breath in, it'll trigger in your brain. It's time to relax. If you close your eyes, it will trigger a relaxation response in the body because if you close your eyes, it signals to the brain that you're in a safe environment. This can help calm your nervous system and reduce your anxiety and your stress. And then, guess what? If you focus on taking a deep breath and holding it for the count of three or even the count of six, when you do that, boom, you will trigger the feeling of safety and peace. And then you can enhance 
your relaxation response to promote well-being. So now I'm going to go ahead and read this for you. And you can say this to yourself. Amidst the chaos, find your calm in the safe space. Embrace the bomb. Hearts open, mind clear, peace and renewal always near. In the quiet, in the calm, breathing deep, feeling free, safe and secure, just me. Reset, renew, let go in this safe space. I float. And you can break those up amidst the chaos. Find your calm. In the safe space, embrace the bomb. Hearts open, minds clear, peace and renewal always near. Amidst the chaos, find the calm. In the safe space, embrace the bomb. Hearts open, minds clear, peace and renewal always near. I find peace, a healing balm in the quiet, in the calm. Breathing deep, feeling free, safe and secure, just me. Reset, renew, let go. In this space, I flow. And this chant can be used as a grounding tool for yourself, relieving tension, reconnecting to the sense of safety and peace within you. By repeating this chant and focusing on the words and the rhythm, you can center yourself, reset your energy, and return to a state of tranquility and inner balance. It can be powerful to practice this to help you navigate the challenging situations and find clarity and cultivate a sense of calm and well-being. Now, thank you for hanging out with me, the Cosmic Mama, and exploring this idea of safe space This is Cosmic Mama signing off with cosmic blessings and celestial wisdom. Good night.